All right. Welcome to, to another webinar of the Traders Bookshelf series. Thank you for coming. Today we'll be discovering a recently published book titled Harmonic Elliott Waves by Mr. Jan Kopsey. Most of you are already familiar with the author. Jan Kopsey is a veteran technician, having begun his career in foreign ex his previous book, Integrated Technical Analysis was very welcomed in the trading industry. His experience ranges from working in Barclays Bank trading rooms in London and in Hong Kong, acting as a, te a technical analyst specialist for, for Dow Jones Terrell Rate in, in Tokyo, where he conducted seminars for bank traders and also as the regional manager for technical analysis products in Asia Pacific. He also provided analysis for GFT for two years before becoming independent to provide his daily forecast through the Daily Forecaster to a range of users from private traders to hedge funds and, and bank traders. Jan Kopsey is a regular contributor at FX Street. You can take advantage of uh, his reports by, by visiting his, uh, his profile here at, uh, at FX Street. As for today's book around the Elliott Wave, the, the the classic Elliott wave theory is is, is constructed around around the three basic rules with, which are quite simple to to grasp. Wave two never retraces more than 100% of wave one. Wave three is never the shortest. Wave four does not enter into the, the territory of wave one. But beside these three uh, basic rules, there is an entire universe of guidelines which, as such, may apply to some situations while not for others. Jan was, was faced with several of the problems um, most of you surely experimented also with, uh, with Elliott waves. One of them, for instance, is, is the missing wave five in a supposedly uh, impulse, impulsive uh, wave. So we started to treat the waves in an alternative way to the classic theory, and thereby, thereby found that projections and retracements, that is ratios, began to show a more consistent accuracy. And the result to the above problem of a lack of a more objective framework uh, relies probably in those in those ratios. Not long ago, I was reading the, the Frost and Precious book, the the Elliott Wave Principle, and on, on page 125, I found I found this quote. I, I quote it directly from from uh, uh, Frost and Preston's book. Similarly, we feel that there is much to learn on the ratio front, and our introduction, which merely scratches the surface, could be valuable in leading some future analysts to answer questions we have not even thought to ask. It was on a weekend when I when I found this this this, this sentence, but I immediately sent this quote to to Jan. Um, it was very clear that there was a door led open to a territory yet to discover. Many years had to pass from seventy eight to two thousand eleven when the the harmonic uh, Elliott wave has has been published. Today we'll have the chance to hear from Mr. Copsey how he interprets and uses the, the waves. So I pass the, the microphone to him and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll take later. Thank you. <clears throat> good evening. Well, it's good evening here anyway and good day over there in Europe and good day wherever you are. Um, Consalo has basically given a, a very good indication of how harmonic Elliott Wave came about. Um, I've been practicing Elliott Wave for, well now it's been something like 22 years, 23 years. And uh, when I came back to full-time forecasting, um, I became very, very frustrated because I could never really identify when a wave was going to end and when it was going to start. And um, in many cases, it was very, very frustrating trying to give advice to people um, when you weren't absolutely certain where things were going to stop. So what I did was began to look at the wave structure backwards. 
And instead of saying, um, right, I'm going to look at the five wave moves and look to see where the wave relationships are, I decided to look at the patterns where the wave relationships lay and then realize that instead of them actually belonging to the five wave moves, they belong to groups of three waves. In other words, basically you're talking about the Tao theory where there are moves of three waves each. Now, what I'll just show you, let me just start. If, I hope I can get this done well. I haven't used this, um, this thing for a long time. Can you see my, uh, probably not, let's try again. Can you see my screen? Yes, you should be able to see my screen now. Let's look at the um, basic structure that Elliot proposed. And looking at, you can see um, a fairly complex structure where we have a, an extended third wave. Now within traditional Elliot wave, everything comes in fives. One, two, three, four, five, makes a wave one. We see another, we see a correction of another five waves. And that is another wave one, a wave two, a wave three, a wave four, a wave five. So that is an extended wave three, a wave four, and a wave five of sorts. So that is the basic idea behind the Elliott structure of looking for five waves and looking at the, the terminal points. Now, a lot of the time, it's very nice to draw these five waves, but it's not always obvious. And I found very definitely that sometimes you'll get waves where you don't expect them to be. And I, I, I can prove that in the S&P. What I want to do though is show you where I start to find out how things actually work. Let's take away the traditional Elliott count and put in how I see things moving. Now I'm drawing here the waves, again the five wave moves, five, five, I'm using the same structure, all five ways. Ahmed, you don't see the drawings? Is, can everybody else see the drawings? I've had a few yeses already. So uh, it seems to be okay. Yep. Everyone's, well, others are seeing. So if there's some problem with Ahmed, I think there might be something on your, I don't know what part, something's going wrong. Now, Within this, you see, I am drawing across the five wave moves all the time. Except here, you can see, as you will see, if you've ever tried to read waves, they're not always clear. Now, what I found was the wave relationships lie within the three wave moves related to each other. So this three wave move, so this three wave move, and this three wave move. Right. Back to the, this uh, five wave move, I found that very always I found that this three wave move was related to this three wave move, and this three wave move was related to this entire move. So what I did was begin to count it differently. And I basically said, well, I'm going to look at this within the Dow theory point of view and say, we're going to see an ABC in wave one. Correction in wave two, corrections I have done, made no changes to them at all. And then a three wave move in wave three, the corrections, and a three wave move in wave five. And that is where I see the wave relationships. Now this covers the point where we don't have extended waves in a harmonic Elliott wave. The structure remains exactly the same throughout. Now what can happen as well are failed fits. So here is a double extension. Excuse the letters, uh, the numbers being a little bit away from the chart. I'm going to fill those in. Basically the five wave moves again. Five, 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 always five going up. Okay. A one, two, second one, two, a third one, two, three, four, five, to make this wave three, 
this wave four, wave five, in the curly brackets, wave three, wave four, and oh, the wave five didn't reach the previous wave three. So was, the idea is there, that is where the failed fifth came from. Well, if you look at the harmonic structure, what you'll find is that it fits in pretty well. So you have the wave one, the wave two, three wave, wave three, wave four, three wave, wave five, great, it's finished, and then it just didn't get up to the top. So actually, what had happened is an A, B, C, X, or maybe if somebody counted it in a different way, it could have been an A, B, C, something like that. So the fell fifth, in the way I see things, is really a byproduct of the wrong structure being used. It doesn't change any of the rules that Gonzalo has already mentioned in terms of wave one, wave two can never retrace more than wave one, that's very logical, wave, uh, wave four doesn't retrace beyond the limit of the wave one, the peak of wave one, um, and that wave three is never the shortest. In my book, almost always wave three is the longest. I have noted that sometimes you get a very long wave five, but it's not that often. So here you see, now there is a standard wave structure all the time. There is, there's no change to it. It is basically um, three, three, three. I've had several people write to me saying, but if you're looking at this, an ABC, that could be an X, ABC, X, ABC, how do you know when you're getting a trending move or when you're getting a corrected move, a triple three? And the answer lies in ratios. Now, this is the key behind harmonic Elliott wave. And I'll show you an example of this, a real life example that actually completed today. I was quite delighted. It's a very appropriate day to hold this webinar because it, it's worked perfectly. It's ratios. And it's also alternation. Now, in traditional Elliott wave, just to cover alternation first, the theory is that if you get a simple wave two, you will get a complex wave four. And it's basically that. And or if you have a complex wave two, you have a simple wave four. In a harmonic Elliott wave, there is an extra added feature that I find exceptionally useful and actually quite powerful. And that is, if you get a shallow wave two, you'll get a deep wave four. If you get a deep wave two, you'll get a shallow wave four. What's more, you will find that the sum of the ratios of wave two and wave four will center around 100%. So if you have a 38% wave two, you can have a 50 to 58% wave four. If you have a very deep wave two, say 90%, you may only get about 14% in wave four. It depends on where the what you're currently looking at, whether you're in a trending move or whether you're in a corrective move. Because obviously five wave moves within the harmonic structure will only make two waves, a wave A or a wave C. They're the only five wave moves in the structure is a wave A and a wave C. Everything else is done in three. So what you will find is within a trending move, a very strong trending move, you will find that the sum of wave two and wave four is closer to 80%, 80 to 90%. If you're in a corrective move, you know, within a triangle or something like that, you, you can get the sum of wave two and wave four getting to more between 100% and 120%.
if you get a very, very deep wave two, and you know, 95%, 100%, then wave four can break away from that guideline. And it is only a guideline. But it's a very powerful tool to be able to recognize waves. Now, the, let's just get this up. The wave relationships, just to show you where they are. In a wave one, wave C should be related to wave A. Everything logical about that. Wave two is obviously a retracement of wave one. Wave three should be related to wave one. Within wave three, wave C should be related to wave A. The two targets, the target for wave C, should match the target for wave three. Wave four should be related to wave three. And also, in some respects, in terms of alternation, it will be related to wave two as well. Wave 5 should be related to the ratio from the beginning of wave 1 to the end of wave 3 and projected from the end of wave 4. And within that wave 5, the wave C should be related to wave A and match the target in wave 5. And I have an absolutely wonderful example to show you in a minute. So, what ratios do we use? Now, what I found is that rather than using the traditional Fibonacci ratios, things like 38.2%, 61.8%, well, they are used, but um, in terms of wave three, traditionally, people talk about wave three being 161.8%. Well, I actually find that rarely does a wave three drop anywhere below 176%, 176.4%. Now, the wave, the real structures you're looking at, really, the wave threes and wave fives, they're, they're the key ones. You will normally find the wave threes will be between 176 to 198.4%. You get a few of them, 223%. In some currencies, cable, for instance, often goes 238%. The crosses, euro yen, does 238.2% sometimes. And then the next area is 261 to 298. And then you repeat them. So 361 to 398, 461 to 498, and so on. So those are the major cluster areas that you're looking at for projections in wave three. Now then, within wave three, as I said, you have a wave C. So what is it you're looking at in wave C? Well, wave Cs are very commonly, if you take the ratios from the Fibonacci sequence and divide them by the one next to it, and one, two, two, um, two numbers away, three numbers away, four numbers away, you get a whole range of ratios, 5.6% to 94.4%, 98.4% as well. And therefore, one right down there, around 2% often turns up. What you do, basically, the way you see is normally start, and far, the most majority start from 85.4% onwards. So you can get a way you see of 85.4%. Every now and then, and it's not that common, you get 61% or 66.7%. But then above 100%, you can get 105.6%, 109%. So you're adding these to 100%. 105, 109, 114.6, 123.6, 153, 138, 161, and so on. So what you're doing when you're trying to match projections to find the right wave three, you're also looking at a wave C projection. Now, commonly the question that's then, I'm, I'm then asked is, well, how do you know which one is going to work? 
Again, that takes a little bit more learning. I can't really cover it in great amount of detail tonight. But if you consider that you will find out within a harmonic elliot wave that there are common areas where price is going to go to. Uh, I'll try and show you one in the um, Dow Jones a bit later because I, I put that in the, in the book and it came, the, the forecast I made in the book turned out to be uh, almost spot on. Um, but the reason I made that call was because I knew that if my wave structure was correct, I knew that the Dow Jones would have to approach 14,000 again. So if it had to get to 14,000, then the wave three must come to around about this sort of area so that we have a wave four and then the wave five had a projection that would get towards 14,000. So that is how I basically said this was the rough area. So you can do that. And you will see that in a second with an example in this restraint that finished today. So let's just have a look in a, a graphic way on how you look for these ratios. They're, still, they're quite wide. A, a wave B can be really shallow, 5.6%, 14.6%. It can be 100%, uh, and there is no way of knowing in advance how deep it's going to be. That is something you have to work with um, and acknowledge that you cannot be totally certain. The 61.8%, the 50%, they're rough and they're okay, but I don't find they happen that often. The projection in wave C, as I say, can be probably anywhere between 85.4% and 261.8%. However, you'll have to use other techniques. You'll have to look at um, the previous wave B or wave 5. You look at uh, pivot levels. You look at um, previous highs and lows. Your swing highs and swing lows doesn't have some sort of impact. So you have to use other little techniques within this to identify where you're going to get the wave A and the wave 1. So that finishes the wave one, and we get a correction in wave two, and that's rather like wave V. It can be anywhere between 5.6% and 100%. And again, you have to work with this sort of issue. It's going to happen every time you come to a one, two, and there's nothing you can do about it. So once you identify the one and two, and obviously it's vital that you do, because until you have identified for sure the wave one and wave two, you cannot project any sort of target to wave three. But what will happen is you'll get an ABC to make wave three. The wave B of wave three is generally, the vast majority of the times, between 14.6% and 58.6%. Every now and then, and mainly within corrective structures and not in a trending structure. It can happen in a trending structure, but um, the majority of them happen in corrective structures. You, you can actually get a wave B or wave 3, I've seen them down to 90%. Um, and that's one big, big difference between traditional elliot wave and a harmonic elliot wave. Now, something you have to watch for. Um, because the normal concept of wave three is it's the strongest and the most powerful of all moves. But um, quite frankly, there are times where it, it really does correct quite deeply. Sorry, that should just go back. That should be showing you the, this should be, oh sorry, 85% to 261.8% of wave A. And we will have the wave one times 176 um, and 298.4 percent. Is wave B, wave three my sweet spot? No, it's one of the most difficult because wave Bs, wherever you are in the structure, whether it's corrective or anything else, you never know what it's going to do. Uh, I'll try and show you that in the S&P, which had an extremely small 
uh, where you pay at one point on the way up. Um, and you have to be very, very careful with it. So weight Bs are actually are the ones I really don't like at all. So wave four is going to be a correction of wave three. Generally, between 14.6% and 58.6%. And you have to obviously refer to alternation. And that will give you an idea of approximately where it's going to end up. And finally, we get a rally in wave five, three waves. The wave B is again between 14.6%, 14 76.4%, .4 and the wave C, the usual 85 to 261.8. And then the wave five, measured from the start of the move to the end of the wave three, you take, in general, majority of the time, 61.8 to 85.4%, add it to here, and that's your target. The vast majority is 61% to 76.4%. You can get 50%, especially when you're getting towards the end of a move, uh, and a whole lot of projections coming together, you can get 50% as well. So that is how the structure develops. But of course, apart from the fact that you've got the wave C projection and the wave 5 projection, you have five waves in wave C. So you've got another wave 5 projection. So you should have three projections all at the same area. Now, as I said, I was going to show you a tar uh, the example of the Swiss franc. Now, I have been holding this target for a while, but I finally announced it um, just over a week ago. And I said, once we've seen uh, the wave C of wave 5, we should then move higher to the 76.4% projection in wave 5 here, uh, between 97.12 to 17, which is also the 176.4% projection in wave 3. So I had today's high as a 176.4% projection of a wave, wave 1. That came from 89.31. And within this, the wave 5 was around about 76.4%. They were just five points apart. And this is where we ended today. 79.19, just two points above the target I set. And within that, we also had a good ratio in that wave 5 as well. Now, let me just show you how that came about. I use a spreadsheet. The move from 89.31, as I said, had a target 176.4% at 97.12. So once I've identified the wave 1 and the wave 2, I can begin to look at projections in wave, in wave 3. So we then moved higher, and from the point, let's just go back. Oh, can you see my, ah, you can't see my spreadsheet, can you? But can you see my spreadsheet? Probably not. I should show you this. You can. Oh, excellent. Let's turn it back on again. Then. Good. Um, okay. So from the... The target here, ah, oh, last, let's take it back, go back to this last one, apologies for that. Um, we got to a wave B at 9042. So this was the wave B of wave three. So from 9042, we moved up, we came up to a 294.4% projection in wave three. We had a pullback in wave four, and there was the 76.4% projection in wave five. That was 97.12. We then went up in wave five in A, B, uh, A and B. This was the bottom of the wave B. So then we had this coming up. We came up to a rather unusual wave three projection, but there was just around about a 
8% projection that wave 5 of wave C to come to the same area. So we had three targets from three different parts of the wave structure, all pointing to exactly the same point. To show you how that works, uh, let's just take that down. Right. Hopefully, hmm. right, yeah, I'm just trying to. Uh, can you see my charts? I'm not getting the uh, usual thing. If you can just tell me, I've got the chart of Swiss franc up. Uh, yes, great. Um, so you can see here, all the way through, from that 1942 low, I had measured all these up. Um, and the wave 3 at 95, the wave 4, A, B, C, all the way up to this morning, to precisely where I wanted it. To show you that the wave 3, this is what I have, and it's a very tentative count because these move so sharply, it's very difficult to identify the wave 1 and wave 2. And that's one of the difficult parts. You get such a sharp move straight away, it's very difficult to actually identify the wave three. So really had to work hard to get through to what this structure was. Now, I'm still not 100% certain, but from the 89.31 low here, we had a three wave move, a correction. Here is a deep wave B, a very deep wave B. There's around about 80%, 85%. But the wave C was something like 266.6% of wave A. And as you've seen, the 176.4% projection was here, and 266.7% projection was here, and all the relevant ratios within wave C also showed exactly the same target. So when you can match those up together, that's the ideal. The same happened here, but we're in a different structure in the euro. Um, what I have for the euro is that we have a, had a wave, no, I better show you the uh, weekly chart. I have been counting this for some while as being a triangle. I had initially thought that this triangle, E, wave E, would get up towards 140. Soon after this broke down here, it became very clear that it was not going to. Um, and suddenly we've got ourselves a wave X. So this was an ABC coming down here. And then we had an expanding irregular triangle finishing here, 30% projection only in wave E. One, two, we're now finishing wave A. Now the problem here is that wave A has no larger frame, time frame target projection. So it's one we have to work with. And I've been saying to my subscribers, you'll know it's going to, I know approximately where it's going to end because um, within this move down from 132.83, um, we have targets. Oop. Come here. Why is that um, disappeared? Ah. Got my, sorry, there's some targets there that I, can't, I just cannot get down because it's a bit stranger. There we go. Um, I was looking for, because it's updating, let me just put, put it down here. The wave five, I hope you can see it. Uh, the 67% at 123.96, 76.4% at 123.34. Because there's no larger time frame target, no high wave degree target. You just have to work with those levels uh, and know that some the wave five is going to end around about there. So I've been saying to my subscribers, once the um, dollar Swissy gets to 97.12.17, that's where you should find your low. So now we should be talking about uh, uh, we should be talking about a wave A in here. So we should be looking at a wave B. How deep will that wave B be? B, 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 B? I think we're going to take our clue from the Swiss franc. Uh, whatever update tends to come up. This is a bit of a pain in the bottom. You can see that 
from 1931 to get to there, we had stop updating chart. I'm going to bring it down so I can see it. I hope, I hope you can see it. Um, the wave four, because wave two is 82%, wave four is probably going to be maybe 23.6%. Now that is actually quite convenient because, just go back to the Swiss franc, that comes down to about 95 and a half. If you think of Elliott's guideline that after a three wave move, and this particularly happens in wave five, it moves back to the span of the wave B. This is the span of the wave B, so it's going to be a very shallow pullback. So therefore, the wave B and wave three of the euro is probably going to be equally shallow. So you can see, I've been going for a little while, I've got to give you time for some questions. Um, there is a lot of structure in a harmonic wave. It tells you a lot of things. Um, it can guide you into where your corrections are going to go, especially in wave four. Um, and you can match all your targets up to find much stronger projections. And it also helps you understand where things are going wrong. Because obviously, it's very difficult sometimes to see the, the charts. Uh, sorry, see the waves because it's very, very noisy. So I've just got things flashing like mad here. Let me just put that down. Um, and so you're not going to get it right all the time. Elliott wave, harmonic Elliott wave is not a trading system, it, but it's an indicator that tells you a lot about price. And that is one of these huge strengths. There's a lot more logic into it, in it, in terms of where things are going to go and how to match things up. Um, and um, therefore, you can tend to forecast with much greater accuracy. Any questions? I know I've left this a bit late. Any questions? Where does my analysis start? My analysis always starts in the largest wave structure I can possibly get. I started, I was telling you, with the, um, with the, with the uh, Dow Jones. Uh, I've got the monthly here. I haven't got the wave count on uh, put on here, but basically I have this as a wave four. This is the first major wave four since inception. So I start from the biggest wave structure I can possibly get, and then I will work from there. Within the Dow Jones, I mentioned to you that um, I started analyzing the Dow Jones just about here, at this wave B. And that was in July 2010. And that is when I made my forecast that we will see wave three of this move between 12,600 and 12,800, give or take 200 points. And I said in July 2010, once it gets there, because this is shallow, we will see a drop of at least 20%, a price drop of 20%, because that represented a 50% correction, which would have to be, because that was about 33%, it would have to be at least 50%. And it came to about 52%, I think. So right from here, I'm, I forecast that it would get there and drop 20%, drop 19%. Following that, it would make a new high. And that's what we've seen. So once you've seen that um, and you've got your wave structure, you then have to follow it internally wherever you go. Within that rally, I was then asked at one point um, how things would go. And I think it was around about here. Now I told you that wave B sometimes aren't very big. Since it, this here it was wave B. Now, people then, because I had counted this five-wave move up, and I said, okay, that's wave A. And then this went up there, and this came down here. And I was thinking, God, did I get that right? Because this looks like a really small wave B. But the wave two 
finished just above the wave B. I was then asked about here in January to, to last year um, what would happen. And this is where I said 1296 would be the top, that would be a small wave 4 because the wave 2 is so deep. Then it would get to 12, uh, 1344, 1350, and then a pull back and then higher. Um, so you can always follow what's going on, and that way you can spot when things are going wrong. How far do I see wave A going in Euro? I think it stopped. I think the wave A was seen this morning. The wave B, I think, may be about 23%. I don't think it's going to be very deep. Um, the wave 3, however, if I can show you that, it started at 134.86. I suspect that, oh, I wonder if I can just minimize this. The wave 4, uh, wave 3 rather, I suspect it could get to 119.95, which is a 94% projection in wave C. But it could get to one, well, where's another one? There was a, let's try 123.07. And that's probably a bit too shallow. That's only 59%. It probably won't be that. Ah, da da. 221%. Euro doesn't normally often go to 23%, but let's try it. 121.83, almost 76.4%. So that is one to watch. But my my favorite target for wave three is 119. Great. Um, so you can see that I can play around on this spreadsheet to work out the rough areas that would work. Then I have some ideas of where my wave three is going to be. And once the wave C of wave three begins to develop, I'm looking and I'm trying to see uh, how that's developing to make to see which target it's going to get to. So at all times, you'll be following that through. Um, I do look at confluences between pairs. I also look at confluences between uh, that and the US indices, because I find that quite useful as well. You can't always do it because they tend to move apart. The, the, the correlation tends to break down a little bit. but there are times where, very clearly, they work very well together. Any other questions? Oh, silence. I've blown you apart. Any time dimension in those? That is the one thing that Elliott Wave doesn't use. Um, a lot of people ask that. And frankly, I think that cycles are, should be done separately. Uh, I, tend not to get, to, I haven't really studied analysis or time analysis that much. I do it in a very long time frame, but not in a shorter time frame. And I do have a couple of people who uh, let me know what their cycles are saying. Uh, one guy said, it was the euro should have bottomed last week. Um, so that was wrong. The S&P index, I see an ABC within wave three. I thought the wave three, had, well, uh, I don't know when you came in, CJS, but that's a whole thing about harmonic wave. It's in threes. And that's where the wave relationships lie. I've got an idea you came in a bit late, but um, everything comes in threes. Uh, could I draw over the beginning of that as the screen was black about the last bit about Euro's next move? Yes. Um, we've seen, I think, wave A this morning. Um, and therefore, I'm looking for a projection in wave three. Um, and I'm looking at potential for 223%. And I think more likely the 261% at 119.95. Which, actually, that's probably going to be wrong at 128.37. I think probably... 123.57 we saw today. I think we could only see 125.76 would be perfect. No, because that was the way to be. A, that doesn't seem correct. Well, oh, 132.83, 123.75.76. Don't know why that's not 
on there. It should be there. Um, and that would tend to suggest, uh, let's have a look at a shallower. There you go, 66.7%. It would not surprise me. Because of the upside in the Swissy is in a wave five, um, that we could get a, a short wave C of wave three in the euro. And I would expect this to be around 119.95. And then you'll get a wave four. Um, probably, given you've got 58% in wave two, you'd get 27 to 33% in wave four before going down again. What strategies can be used with harmonic Elliott Wave? As I said, harmonic Elliott Wave is not a trading system. It is an indicator. It's telling you about where price is likely to stall and where the high risk areas are. How would you normally decide on taking a trade is the answer to your question. One, you're probably looking, I don't look at fundamentals at all. You could use your fundamentals. Two, you can look at the normally trade setups, the normal trade setups you generally you use, whether that be indicator-based or price-based, candlestick-based, um, pattern-based, anything like that, uh, you can begin to look at. If you believe that you're in, say, a wave three, then you can begin to look at pull, uh, Selling into pullbacks in a, in a downturn, that sort of thing. Um, I don't go into the spread, uh, spread cheap construction in the book, um, but you will find on my website you can download the spreadsheet. Okay, and you can change it to any sort of uh, currency or any market you like. So you can go in and see that. Anyway, I've been told to wrap up. My time is up. I've gone over my time. I'm sorry about that. Um, anyway, I hope that's given you a broad overview of Harmonic Elliott Wave and the basis on which I look to forecast and identify common targets across the wave degrees. The website is, I think I can get it up, here, www.harmonicewave.com. Maybe I have to refresh that if I have. There it is. I have a blog as well where I post a few things. If you look on FX Street on the, it's every day or every other day I post a, a daily forecast, you'll have a link to my blog on that as well. So thank you for joining me. If you have any further questions, do feel free to send uh, questions through the contact on my website. Um, I try my best to answer as much as I can. Thank you. We want to we want to thank Jan Kopsi for for accepting to join the session and answer our, all our questions. Uh, very highly uh, instructive uh, session indeed. Also, our thanks to the great audience for, for participation. As for uh, future sessions on this uh, bookshelf series, we'll repeat the experience and keep uh, introducing you more interesting, more interesting books. Thank you, and see you, see you soon.